Growing up here, they got basketball courts everywhere you look, but for him to ride a bike, he did something different. It meant that you can do anything that you want to do. Nelson used to come to work every morning and he'd bring his bike up the back. I think Nelson more or less wanted to be free. And he was a free spirit. You know, cycling was a sport that was not uh, dominated by black people. And um, to just see this black guy in a sport that's mainly white and he's from home. And that right there inspired me. I saw the muscles in his legs. I said, man, only dude I ever seen with horse legs. What Nelson did to cycling brought a lot of more African-American kids into cycling, which is fantastic. He came out when, you know, there wasn't a lot of us at all. For a guy to be that successful in a sport like that, where there were no blacks, you know, in a sport, he was the only one. The cycling community never really held the color of your skin too much to task anyway. They've always been pretty much accepting of, like, can you ride a bike? Nelson and speed went hand in hand. Nelson, from zero to 50, was the fastest in the world. And teams wanted him, not just because he was an African-American, because he was who he was. It was big news in, in, in Ireland that uh, you know, someone from 115th Street made it to the Olympics. We, we cheered him on, gave him the best welcoming and the celebration for his success. You know, it was one of the biggest things that happened in the project. Later, as he became the, the major personality and, and sort of the star in the cycling world, the fact that he's been a bike messenger, I mean, it's added to his legend. And Bales pedals hard, he's going to win it! Whoa. He's real, he's a real dude. He's done the real thing, he's done the same thing I have in life. He made us believe that we can do anything. That bike took me places. I think he had a name, they called a cheetah or something like that.